We have some problematic areas um, where we think some of the leaks are prevalent coming out of. Uh, we're going to add some fasteners, some rivets. Uh, we're going to make some rivets, and I'm going to lay in some caulking. Um, and so we'll go through that whole process, but a little bit um, just about some of the material and tools. Um, so this is a rivet. Uh, copper originally would have been made with iron, uh, bog iron, but this is a far superior material. Um, this is a rove. Uh, it goes through the boat, and this goes over the top, and then it gets rivered over the, gets riveted, peened down uh, over the top. And this is where the term clinker boat comes from, uh, by the sound that this makes when you're fastening. Uh, this is oakum. Uh, it's juvenile hemp, uh, or called jute. Uh, it's the stalk of a of a juvenile hemp plant. Um, this is heavily tarred, um, really rot resistant, um, pretty commonly used in ship caulking still. Uh, larger ships, um, otherwise smaller boats are generally just cotton. Um, but this is amazing stuff, very uh, oily and very flammable. Um, as far as some of the tools for riveting, um, this is a backing iron. It's just a splitting maul uh, used for stone, but it's very heavy. And this will go on the back back up the rivet while the other person uh, peens over the back, uh, other side. Just general mallets. Um, this is what I use to set the rove onto the rivet. It's just a long, uh, I think, 916 socket. Uh, it just serves the purpose well. Um, this is what I'll use to drill the hole. It's a tapered number 14 fuller bit. Um, you can get these online. Um, it's tapered. It's shaped like the rivet itself. Um, that's to allow for a smaller hole, um, you know, so you're not just drilling one big hole, so there's a big, you know, this is much bigger than over here. Uh, is that a special drill or did you modify it? <coughs> yeah, you can buy these. So, okay. yeah, it's a company right. called Fuller. Tapered drill. Yep, and we use these for fastening boats in general if we're doing, you know, traditional screws or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. You so said number 14. Number 14, yep. Um, and they seem to work really well for the rivets that we've made. And so, obviously, if you're making... You know, you could just check, you know, because you obviously don't want to undersized because uh, you end up splitting the wood out. Um, so just uh, be cautious. Um, this is a caulking iron um, with a heavy, heavy bent. Um, I actually modified it today because this one was very bent. Um, but this is what I'll use to lay in the oakum into the seam itself. Um, going further down, uh, we'll go through the anvil and stuff like that after. Um, but otherwise, these are the tools we're going to use, drill. Um, obviously, this is not what they would have used in the Viking Age. Um, it would have been a bow drill with a spoon bit. Um, not necessarily like this. But. Now, if I may make a comment. Sure. Uh, into the 20th century, uh, certain groups were still using wrought iron for their rivets. Yeah. But the trouble is you have to punch them out every 12 years because the boat gets nail sick. R right, exactly. And replace them. <clears throat> and copper lasts a long time. Yeah, and the, and I, the Giesling that I built in Denmark was made of uh, wrought iron, mm -hmm. uh, handmade iron ro uh, rivets and roves. Um, they've all now since switched over to copper in all their <coughs> newest boats, most recent boats. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, and uh, you guys can come around now on the other side, and I'll we'll start to. Uh, um, so what I'm finding over here is that there's some invalid spacing of rivets. So there should probably be one here, maybe one here. We're gonna put one here. Um, and there's some gaps, you know, I can tell here. It's touching on the other side, but I'm just going to back some of this up a little more oakum. Um, and, you know, some of these I'll back up uh, with just a little bit more. And caulking is a very uh, temperamental thing. Um, you really want to know what you're doing. You know, you just don't want to jam a bunch of caulk in there. Because uh, then if it expands, you can blow the rivets out, you can screw the plank up. Um, so it's, caulking is something that takes years to really figure out. Um, and, you know, I've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, you can get the hang of it, but there's just, a, you know, a method to the So madness. starting out, less is better. Less is always better. You can always put more in. Because it's going to swell up. Yep, exactly. Um, so what I'm going to do is just sort of separate this a little, uh, depending on the size of the hole. This hole is actually pretty big, so um, I'm going to lay in probably two strands. Um, so I'll take a length, basically, you know, the length of how long I want to go. You're going to have a hard time caulking around a rivet, and you don't really want to caulk around a rivet. Um, and you want to go really lightly, so you'll have your tail end sort of finish up where your rivet is and then have the thicker part uh, in the center between the rivets. Um, so this one's a little long, 
So I'm going to take it down a little. <clears throat> and then you want to sort of roll it. And I do it on my pant leg, um, but I can do it right here. And you just sort of lightly, you're sort of skimming your hand over the top of it. <clears throat> and when I'm doing a large ship, I'll, I'll have this whole strand and you split the thing down the middle and you sit in a chair and you spin for, you know, a day essentially to get all your spun oakum. Um, and you kind of, you'll pull it out. This stuff's pretty, pretty consistent with this other strand. This stuff, um, this is what I more commonly use for, sh you know, doing long runs in, in oakum, uh, in ships. So you'll sort of split it out um, and then you'll you start to pull it and you can kind of, and that is, you tease it out. This is oakum also, just less treated. Uh, and it's more, it's a cleaner material, so I like caulking with it. It's just as good, uh, especially if you're going to pay the seam, paint the seam um, after. But you just want to, it's much better on like a piece of fabric. But um, And then I go through and spit on my hand and continue to roll it. And the spit kind of activates the oakum. And then you'll get like a nice, you know, this is, you can still tease out a little more. This is also another aspect of caulking that takes you know, a while to really get the hang of. Generally you want to look something like this if you're caulking a ship. Um, but we're just going to take a little piece and we're going to roll it out, making a strand. And then I'll lay it in. And this is a, you know, it's a big hole, so I'm just going to feed it in a little like this before I go to set it. And it's a messy job because there's tar everywhere. It'll kind of get it in place. And I'll go through this, obviously not caulking mallet, but uh, it'll suffice. And you just go around, setting it. You never want to do this. That's a sign that you don't know what you're doing. And it's highly looked down upon. No double taps. No double taps. <laughs> That's in combat only, but not in both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you hear somebody caulking doing that, you should shame them. So I'm just going to keep working along the seam, and you'll get a feel, because obviously if you're going to, if you feel you're pushing too too hard through, you'll feel it go through, and that's okay. what you don't want to do. You just want to kind of set it, Yeah. Um, and then I can pull this tail, because I don't need that. And then I'll take, you know, I'll need a little more in here, so I'll just take a little bit more. And generally you're doing this from the outside. Um, but since this is an open gap on the inside. Yeah. So what are little. you what are you looking for? How do you know you have enough caulk in there? Um, you'll feel it. You'll be able to, it'll, if you're using the right pressure, it'll stop you. And you'll, you'll just, you'll get a feel for the, the density of the, the oakum in there. Okay. And you don't want it like a super hard. You want a little give. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to be able to push it through. Okay. So that's good. Um, one thing I should have done is drilled first. Drill my holes first because you'll have a tendency to pull the oakum out with the uh -huh. drill. Okay. Um, so I'll do that now. We'll switch up. So I'm going to throw that number 14 in. When you're, when you're drilling, you really want to look, because your tendency is just to go square to the plank. But since these are beveled, since the planks are like this, if you go square to that, you're going to miss your flange on the outside. You're going to, you're going to, go through, you're going to miss your lap. So you want to sort of visualize, look at where you're going through, look how much lap you have, and where you are in the boat. And where there's more turn, you're going to want to turn out more, so you don't okay. completely miss it. <clears throat> And the reason for this coving is generally you want to put your put your rove and rivet right on that um, space. Um, so I'm going to actually drill from the outside because we're going to drill. What is that? What you said a cove is called? Yeah, this coving. It's called all cove. Okay. Oh, I didn't. You know, I never thought about that. Uh, yeah. Is that so, done with a chisel or a plane? Uh, I made a I made like a scraper plane. Okay. Um, right. With the profile in it. Actually, yeah. I have them here. I think. Huh. I'm going to show you. And if you highly uh, 
I don't know. That's a point of contention. This is incendiary. Yeah, it is incendiary. Uh, so I made these um, based off the profiles um, that were found on the original Gissing book. Mm -hmm. um, this one here is a is a cove. So what this goes is on the inside of this lap. Oh. You come along and you do this, and it makes a cove, and that's where the oakum will sit. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then this one goes on the top. You do the same thing, and it will make this profile here. Did you make those in Denmark? No, I made them uh, in our shop. Yeah, they had. Yeah, they have them in Denmark. Um, Very cool. Luckily, Trina sent us some. Um, sent you a template of sent it. Sent us some profile in you know some of the drawings they have for them, um, and it's just uh, angle iron that we cut and carved. So it seems like a lot of the tools and stuff that you use is just things that you found just like oh this works for this application. Yeah, we had to make most of the tools um, for what we did, like the clamps and stuff like that, and then yeah, we did some other you know. Like this, I didn't go ahead and make a spoon bit, and we didn't yeah. use a bow drill just for time's sake. We have one if you need it. But they're great. They're very efficient, and that's what we used it um, in the museum. And it uh, it's very fast, um, and you know you don't ruin your drill, which is great. Um, so these are two profiles. You guys can check these out. I'll leave them just here if you want to. Um, so now I'm going to go through, and I'll drill this one. I'm going to drill from the outside in because the taper, we're gonna go through this way with the row and rivet. And so you want the bigger hole outside with the smaller hole inside. Um, this one's a little awkward because I'm underneath the trailer. So in here. Again, you're thinking about your angle. See, I went too close, but I think it's manageable. So I should have been more, more leaned out with that one. Just a little tight squeeze down there. Um, then I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna nail the rivet up. And if you have a friend, the backing iron, you want to back the plank while you're driving it through. You can get in there. I think it's. I was up in it. So he's gonna back the back the plank itself while I drive so you don't damage it. Yeah. So that's really close, too close to the edge of the seam. I wanted to be like out here. Right, so we'll fix that on the next one. So then I'm gonna take the rove, um, find one that is snug. And Tucker's gonna climb under. He's got the bad job. Put some ears up. I can use my jacket too if you want to land it. Right. <coughs> you know, it's always concerning to me when every, everybody but you puts on hair and protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is. I'm already uh, half deaf. So. <laughs> sure. yeah, I know guys have tinnitus, and it's the last thing I want. Alright, so Tucker is now on the outside of the boat, and he's got that backing iron right on the back of the head of the rivet. Um, and so he's going to back that up, and I'm going to drive the. Rove, set the rove as it's called. Set that down. And you see, this is going to lock it in. So, this is an important step. Um, you want that nice and tight, um, and it's going to squeeze the plank on. Then, I'm going to come through, uh, bolt cutters. Traditionally, this is done with like a chisel and hammer. And you put the chisel on one side and you hammer the other side and it'll split that. But I'm using bolt cutters. And you want to leave just about a head, you know, half inch, quarter inch, somewhere in there, something to really peen over. And and you save your brass, you save your copper. Yeah, we save them all. We have a whole bucket of it. Yeah, I saw you do that, Bruce. I was yes, like, oh, I can't help saying. myself. We'll melt also, this down. <laughs> we can turn these into nice little amulets for you all at the fort. Yeah, I've made a 
I've made a necklace, a few necklaces from an off. Mm -hmm. This year at Vikings Con, I do want to make you a little handle. Oh, okay. So. Copper. Um, I don't know what material. He 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 has all the material I need. <laughs> copper would be cool. <clears throat> I can probably do a copper one and an iron one. One of the neighbors slowed down and looked at me. They probably think I'm a strange person. You want to have fun making What them? would give them that <laughs> idea? Four thread, four screwdriver. <laughs> it's about a yeah, it feels like three quarter pound. Yeah, something like that. Does um, the um, does the copper ruin the face of the hammer at all? No, 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 no. It's much softer than than this is cast iron. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I'm just gonna flatten it a little, and you want to make sure you're hitting. It's very easy to move this head around because it's he backing, Is he backing it up yep. right now? Yeah, okay. he's underneath. Yep. Um, so I like to have my hand where the head's going to land, is sort of, if that makes any sense. So if you think about a triangle, uh, a cute triangle, like I'll have my hand in parallel line, just in, you know, you don't want to be up here like this. Okay, all right. Down like that. <clears throat> And that's the sound you're uh, looking for. You'll hear it sort of double tap. And what's the sound is it's hitting this and then the hammer is bouncing off. The, the backing iron is bouncing off and hitting again. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of action you want because it's pushing it back in and pushing it down. So it's it's dually working. So if you hear double tapping, you shouldn't chain them. Uh, if you're riveting, no. Yeah. If they you have, have that different. sound, yeah. if, you, if you're doing this, you can shame them. Okay. Just go around like that, get a nice fasten, and this is gonna—that's gonna squeeze that whole point, uh, rivet down, mm -hmm. and close that seam up. Um, and that's essentially the process of of riveting and caulking and sort of refastening. And you know, you can do this periodically if you see an area that is leaking. You know, there's no harm in putting another rivet in um, anywhere down the road. Um, and we're gonna do we're gonna do three more. One, two. Uh, one, two, two more. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. Sure, leaning outboard is a better bet. It's better to be out here than out here. That's there you perfect. go. Okay. We're, on, we're on the money, Tucker. And you're going to go all the way through with the with the full, um, fuller bit. It might be seen too soon to call it, but it seems like Tucker's the better hole driller. Definitely. <laughs> He's got a good position down there. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to back the... And I'm not adding oakum to this because it's a pretty good seam. I mean, it's actually, it's holding water right there. So I'm just adding it because there's too much space for my liking between rivets. Okay. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. And you see the action with the, this coming back up and going yeah. down? That's what I was talking about on the outside. Because you want to hold it well enough that it backs it, but also has that recoil. Before we went up to Lonsall Meadow, we tightened over a thousand rivets below the water line. Yeah, and it's good periodically, yearly. Yeah. That's part of the annual maintenance, is to go around and, and just sort of tighten all the rivets. Yeah. Have one person hold the bucking iron. I think Fred made a special electronic rig to make sure the... Per water right there, so I'm just adding it because there's too much space for my, like, between rivets. Ready? All right, go ahead. Okay. And you see the action with this coming back up and going yeah. down? That's what I was talking about on the outside. Because you want to hold it well enough that it backs it, but also has that reach. Set that down. And see, this is going to lock it in. So this is an important step. Um, you want that nice and tight, um, and it's going to squeeze the plank on. Then I'm going to come through. Uh, I'm sorry. There's something about a boat. Cocker. Cocker. <laughs> He's got a bar right in front of him, so it's, 
not the nicest place. <laughs> well, so now you've got it's, one. It's near preferable the end. to go that way. You got one in the middle, and you got one a little bit inboard. So you have the three varieties of. Uh, I'm just going to start swelling now. with tongs until it gets short, short. Yeah, not so long ago. Here. Okay. Draw, it's called drawing out, so I'm pulling it out as I go. So that's where you're at. I'm going to heat it up one more time. He uses the Japanese wet anvil technique from the samurai age. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. I think you can use the wet anvil. Then I'm going to put the head on it. Supposedly it's glassy. Drop it on my toolbox. Oh, yeah. yeah. 